To put this in simple terms, what happened yesterday was Robinhood was unable to meet the deposit requirements that it was anticipating for those, those shares in certain symbols uh, by the clearinghouses. So for every, every time that you want to go buy something, they have to actually make a deposit first. And the anticipation was that they were not going to be able to do that. And before having a liquidity crisis, they were trying to prevent one, uh, which raises all sorts of questions. Uh, I asked one of them, which was effectively how concerned he is that some folks are saying, I'm going to stick it, uh, stick in this to the end. We've talked a lot about this, that some of these investors um, aren't just trying to stick it to the man, but ultimately they may be sticking it to themselves. Ultimately, we're a self-directed platform and we are in favor of access. So we think that customers should have that access. We should also give them the tools and education that they need to be informed to market participants. And so we've been investing a lot in our Robinhood Learn portal. Um, and uh, ultimately, we don't provide advice. Um, we are a self-directed brokerage platform. And uh, we understand people might want to make investments for various reasons. And uh, we're, we're supportive and we stand with our customers in providing that access. Some investors look at the idea of an accredited investor, a wealthy investor, the professionals, as having a leg up, that the system is really rigged in their favor. Do you think that's true? Anytime there's limits to participation, um, you know, that, that prevents certain people that, um, that might be interested in doing things from, from doing them. Uh, I'm not going to say that those limits are unmotivated. There's reasons that these limits were put in place by regulators in the first place. And uh, Robinhood is committed to engaging in that conversation. Uh, we, we believe we have a valuable insight from serving this, this customer base. But I'm also not going to go ahead and blanket say that, you know, regulations are, are uh, not motivated because um, there, there are very, very reasonable motivations for, for some of these things. It was fascinating uh, to listen to, to some of his comments uh, as uh, we all grapple with what's happening, not just with these shares, but also with Robinhood itself. Big questions about whether Robinhood investors, clients, if you will, are going to stay with Robinhood or whether they're going to jump to other platforms. Yeah. Uh, questions about the robustness of the system uh, and clearly uh, the company trying um, to not only protect itself yesterday, protect itself perhaps more than investors themselves, though they would have uh, been injured uh, two, had they not been able to to make the deposits in the process. And uh, we'll see uh, what the announcement of a billion dollar investment does and whether it does instill more confidence. This this is a this is a platform that's gone down before, by the way. Um, you know, we, we earlier this year, yeah. uh, they struggled with uh, they struggled with the issue of it being a robust platform. And I think it does raise lots of questions uh, for the company, but also more broadly for the industry. Uh, if some of these systems can't handle the kinds of trading that's taking place. Well, that was going to be my question, Andrew. I mean, this is, is this a situation of growing pains for Robinhood, like we saw earlier when their trading platform just couldn't handle the amount of volume that came on? Or is this just a, a business model that doesn't work? When you are offering free trades to everybody, right. you can do that when times are easy and times are good. But anytime there's going to be any stress in the system, are they going to be able to handle it? And the whole idea of was this a liquidity crisis? I mean, they're trying to say they were trying to prevent the liquidity crisis, but they basically right. did face a liquidity crisis yesterday. They had to stop trading in a lot of these things. They had to draw down their credit lines and they had to get a billion dollars of, of additional uh, input from other investors. That, that's kind of the definition of a liquidity crisis. They came through it at this point, I, but they hit a liquidity crisis yesterday. I think there's two issues here. One is I, I do think there's a business model issue to some degree. Um, you know, 95 percent of the time, it's all going to work. Uh, Five percent or maybe uh, maybe less uh, there. It's going to get complicated. And this is one of those type of situations. Uh, yeah, but I think it's also it's an okay. issue of Mission a startup. Criticals. You know, this Systems. was this was not happening uh, at Fidelity. Now, you could argue this was not happening at a Fidelity uh, in part because the so many people were not all using Fidelity uh, to make these trades. So there is a sort of unique confluence of 
of, of where all the trading activity was. But I think there's going to be a big question among regulators and the like about what kind of capital requirements systems like this need. And perhaps the models unto themselves need to be changed in terms of what those requirements are. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.